driver being tested attempts to align a movable rod with a stationary one. If the movable rod comes to a stop in advance of the stationary rod, the driver perceives objects to be farther away than they actually are. By using various colored rods, the effect of color on depth perception can be determined. About one out of every four people tested proved to have a visual deficiency in judging distance. The perimeter is used for measuring side vision. The man being tested was found to have 75 degrees of side vision on his right. Side vision is important in detecting cars approaching from the side, when leaving parking places, at intersections, or when pedestrians step out from the curb. Good drivers avoid looking directly into oncoming headlights by concentrating on the shoulder of the road. This machine measures the effect of glare upon the eyes and the time required for them to distinguish objects on the road. Equally as important as good vision is a fast reaction time. This gun device is used to test reaction time and braking distance. The tester riding with the driver pulls a string firing the gun, which projects a yellow chalk pellet marking the pavement. When the driver hears the gun fired, he applies his brakes as quickly as possible. The change in momentum as the brakes are applied swings the device and fires a second shell, which marks the end of the reaction distance. Where the car stops marks the end of the braking distance. In a test conducted at 20 miles per hour, the driver reacted in approximately three quarters of a second, during which he traveled 21 feet. The braking distance was 23 feet, making a total stopping distance of 44 feet on a dry, level pavement. 44 feet is about three car lengths and is a good average figure. At 40 miles per hour, even under controlled conditions, it required nine car lengths to stop. The important fact to remember is that when speed is doubled, it requires four times the distance to stop after the brakes are applied. And here we see from the car a test at 60 miles per hour. Few drivers realize that at this speed it takes nearly 300 feet to stop. This demonstrates the fallacy of the old stop on a dime story. The following scenes of law infractions and unsafe driving are unrehearsed and unstaged. And you will see many of them when driving. In taking these pictures, the camera was mounted on the outside of our car, giving the appearance that we were driving on the wrong side of the road, which we assure you was not the case. The cameraman was at all times accompanied by a highway patrol officer. Each of us should know and avoid the basic driving errors, which are responsible for approximately 80% of the traffic accidents which result in deaths, injuries, and extensive damage. These are speeding. improper overtaking and passing, no right of way, following too closely, Improper turning. Driving on the wrong side of the highway. And failure to observe before backing or misjudging clearances while backing. The outstanding cause of accidents is speeding. This is the popular conception of what is meant when we say a driver was speeding. For those who study traffic accidents, however, speeding is going too fast in relation to conditions of visibility, road surface and width, curves, slope, the amount of traffic, and the weather. 
You may very easily be speeding at 10 or 15 miles per hour if conditions are adverse. Careful drivers always consider these factors and measure their speed accordingly. The poorest condition should determine your maximum speed. Everything may be perfect as far as road width, no curves, dips, or traffic, yet poor conditions such as limited vision due to fog or icy roads may create hazards which would make 10 miles per hour speeding. This serious accident was caused by the car skidding on a wet pavement and turning over twice before stopping. Under certain conditions, drivers may create a traffic hazard by driving too slowly, as this chap is doing, by driving below a normal rate of speed on the inside lane of a four-lane highway. Through holding up traffic, he is encouraging drivers to take unnecessary chances in passing him. If you would drive slowly on an open highway, show consideration for your fellow drivers by staying in the right-hand lane. The law requires you to do so, and it is safer and may keep you from getting a ticket. Almost as big a factor in the death toll as speeding is improper overtaking and passing. This automobile and its occupants were victims of such a violation. Almost all state laws governing overtaking and passing require that the pass be started with sufficient space so that the vehicle doing the passing will not cut in on the vehicle being passed and will be back in the proper lane before any oncoming cars are within 100 feet. 100 feet is a very narrow margin of safety as it is less than one second of time at even the slow passing speed of 35 miles per hour. Safety authorities recommend that much greater distances be allowed. A good way of judging safe passing distance is to observe carefully the oncoming vehicle, and if it appears to be standing still, there is sufficient space to pass. Here we are making a pass in the proper manner. Notice that we stay back far enough to see and judge conditions up ahead. Now we are sure that we can make the pass safely as the vehicle approaching appears to stand still. We pick up speed quickly so that the vehicle we are passing cannot start a race with us. Before you return to your lane of traffic, Always check your rear view mirror to be sure you don't cut in. The right of way laws of the Pacific Coast states are not completely uniform. However, the important point is that a defensive driver thinks less of his rights of way and more of preventing accidents. We are all familiar with the poems about Joe Dokes, who was right, dead right as he sped along, but he's just as dead as if he'd been wrong. In leaving a parking space, you must yield the right of way to passing traffic. Here, a driver pulls out from the curb properly. He has signaled and he has looked to be sure the way is clear. At intersections, you must yield the right of way to pedestrians. Here, a driver stopping at an intersection does so before entering the crosswalk. This conforms to the law and does not inconvenience or endanger pedestrians. We should approach all intersections at a speed which will enable us to stop before entering, if necessary, to avoid a collision. This car is forced to wait for traffic approaching from his left, which has failed to yield the right of way as required by law. While this truck is complying with the law by yielding to traffic approaching from his right. Here is a driver in position for a left turn. He yields to the vehicles approaching from the opposite direction until a safe interval appears when he can complete the turn. Those multiple car crashes which occur frequently and involve many cars usually result from the bumper chasing habit. Following too closely is one of the most common driving errors. It is especially dangerous to engage in bumper chasing when entering dark tunnels from the bright sunlight. Because practically all drivers are guilty of bumper chasing at one time or another, the front grill business has never known a depression. Proper following distances are those which leave space for a reaction distance and a braking distance 
For the average driver, these distances are three car lengths at 15 miles per hour, seven at 30 miles per hour, and 13 at 45 miles per hour. Remember these magic numbers, three, seven, and 13. They will save your grill and needless expense and inconvenience. A frequent cause of accidents is making improper left turns. The common complaint against women drivers is that they don't signal, they make left turns from the gutter and right turns from the center of the street. Statistics show these driving faults are definitely not confined to women. By making left turns properly, you cause a minimum of disturbance to other traffic, and those behind you can pass to the right. Drivers of large trucks have particular trouble in complying with the law, yet it can be done. This driver is making a proper right turn. He keeps his truck close enough to the curb so that no one can be caught in a squeeze play between the truck and the curb. Now we come to an item that is not a cause, but rather a type of accident, the backing accident. Fully half of backing accidents occur because the driver backs into something he did not know was there. This cautious father checks carefully and moves his child to the driver's side of the car so that he can keep an eye on him while backing. When parking on hills, in addition to setting the brake, turn the front wheel so the curb will prevent the car from rolling downhill. If the car is facing down the hill, turn the front wheels inward. When facing uphill, turn the front wheels outward and resting against the curb. Safety authorities say you should plan your driving to avoid backing. They say most backing accidents result from where and how you park. Here is a driver who just abandons his car without a thought of the backing he will have to do when leaving the space. This time he parks so that his forward motion will be unobstructed. No backing accidents for him now. Green lights are not speed up signals. One should always be prepared to stop as drivers crossing the intersections may have yellow fever and jump their signal. When driving, be alert, always ready for the unexpected. You don't know what the other fellow will do. But if you make a conscientious effort to drive safely at all times, you will not be guilty of contributing to the terrific toll of the highways. Throughout the West, the call of the open road beckons with numberless scenic attractions to be enjoyed. Don't let your enjoyment of them be marred by unfortunate and unnecessary accidents. Laws and regulations, good roads and warning signs, enforcement agencies, the constant endeavors of safety councils and automobile associations to promote safety are all in the public interest. In the final analysis, however, accidents can only be prevented when each of us accepts personal responsibility for making our highways safe. This film has shown you the outstanding driving errors which are responsible for the majority of traffic casualties and how you may avoid them. You may never find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but if you apply the golden rule of driving as you wish the other fellow would drive, you will live longer and happier. You will be doing your part to make our highways safe. It's up to you. Thank you.